Welcome everyone to our uh, to our AIM Learn Fast webinar series. This is our 132nd webinar of our series that we started back in March of 2020. Still going strong and still enjoying this and still putting out some 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 great content. The um, so far at the end of the last webinar that we did, we are at uh, out on our YouTube page that we'll we'll look at uh, give you some links to in a minute if you haven't uh, seen it yet. Uh, over 150 hours, uh, almost 152 hours of of strong, uh, good uh, AIM content, uh, you know, uh, tutorials and information and training materials that we've put together uh, via these webinars, and it's been um, it, it's been very very helpful. I know for a lot of people, I get a lot of a lot of feedback. It's been they've been great to do and uh, su such value. Uh, for, for everyone. So we're going to continue to do those. But I just wanted to give you an idea of the amount of time uh, that uh, of, of, of video that is out there for everybody to take a look at if you're if you're when you need it. So keep that in mind. We're here today to it to um, we, we announced, uh, as all of you know, uh, that Ray Studio 3 analysis was going to be our is now our production uh, data analysis software, not to say that Ray Studio 2 uh, will not continue to be available. Of course, it will. Uh, it'll look just like we what is shown here in the uh, in the opening screen. Here, you'll have your choice of uh, of of analyzing your data in Ray Studio 2 or Ray Studio 3, and uh, uh, th that will be there for quite some time. Uh, probably at some point, the two will come off, but it's certainly not. Uh, uh, it'll still be available. Still be uh, available to download and use. Uh, but uh, maybe in a year or so, they they pop the two out of there and 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 make this a, a streamlined Ray Studio 3 product. We will see. That's outside of my my hands. But uh, uh, but when we talked about it, we're production now, so we've decided to put together a, 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 the next series of of uh, webinars is going to be about you know using Ray Studio 3 and using it better. And, uh, and and we're lucky to have James Colburn join us today. And and the topic he's going to talk about is personalizing your data analysis. You know, taking that data, you're you're going to grab it off of the, you're going to download it with Ray Studio 3, and then how do you how do you personalize that and set it up to be more efficient with your Ray Studio 3 analysis? I'd like to uh, I'd like to welcome James here. James, this is your this is your ninth time co-hosting with us. I thought it was eight. And then, uh, then as I was uh, going back and setting up all the links and stuff, it uh, this is your night. So you're uh, you, you've been here quite a bit, and we certainly appreciate it very much. Um, thank you for coming, James. Oh, thanks for having me. It's lovely to be here. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, I can't believe almost at double figures in terms of the number of times I presented with you, which is very kind. Um, and it's also lovely to be talking about Ray Studio three analysis um, in production now as well. It's sort of uh, you know, a lot of what we talked about has been testing and, and working through the beta. So to be able to then start talking about um, uh, Ray Studio 3 analysis um, is, uh, is um, probably one of the most exciting things, I think, for many of us who've worked with AIM and AIM software uh, for quite some time. So, uh, yeah, this should be good today. It's, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. I haven't looked at this data yet. This is, we're, we're all doing this. <laughs> Ah, there it is. Same time, so we'll see how I, we get it. I love it. I love these things where we uh, we're, we're totally on the fly. I kind of, uh, you know, as a, as a presenter, sometimes it's like, no, I I really want everything to be nice and detailed, but uh, and, and practiced. But then I uh, uh, almost all of my best training that I've done and working with people has just been let's just jump in, let's do it, let's talk about it. Uh, people, I think, learn better that way than uh, than us having something canned. So this will, I'm, I'm sure this will be good. Uh, James is, um, uh, as it says here, an avid Formula Ford racer. I know you've got a new car you've built. You've been excited about it. Uh, I think the data we're going to look at is from this past weekend, uh, taking a look at it. So that'll be fun with, uh, I know you've got a new engine and some other things. Uh, produces uh, AIM Sports videos. There'll be some links in the chat. There certainly will be links in the YouTube uh, description box if you're watching this later on YouTube. Just scroll down to the description box and it'll say show more. And uh, we'll have a bunch of links that James has done 
um, on how-to videos, not just on Ray Studio 3 analysis, although there's a bunch of those there, but he's got a bunch of other ones too, uh, you know, setting up your screen and, and setting up configurations and, and all sorts of things. So t tons of great, great information out there from James on his YouTube page. And voice of uh, the AIM Academy for AIM Technologies, which is AIM United Kingdom. James does a great job uh, over there. And I, I think uh, you have a, a webinar tomorrow, I think, right? Talking about uh, uh, Ray Studio 3 analysis. So That's right. Back to back, so it'll be today, and and then we'll uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. And it, it might be slightly different content, but at the same time, the, the <laughs> same uh, conversation is going to be. It's 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 nice to be able to do. Um, it's going to be just really nice to be able to do uh, things in the production software. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah. Absolutely, it's 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 an added value for everyone. So if you uh, if you have a moment, uh, to, uh, yeah, chat with James or uh, uh, however to get. Uh, to understand how to sign up for that. So I don't have that link uh, prepared. So I, I, I didn't uh, didn't think of that. At this point, I'll I'll probably run the presentation, James, for just a little bit. You talk for a little bit and we will uh, we've only got a few prepared slides and then we're going to jump into uh, sharing of James's screen and he's going to uh, uh, sounds like uh, open the data and, and begin to prepare uh, and, and show you some ways to look at the data. So James, go ahead. Thank you so much. So um, I did notice some of the, the folks who commented on, on a video I just did recently. I also wrote a piece for um, the Speed Secrets uh, weekly conversation as well, which was one of the things I wanted to focus on this year is really starting to sort of pinpoint if I'm going to help people, um, you know, with tutorials and, and conversations, how do we get to sort of what's the best way to use it's like boiling down why do you download your data and I think when we oftentimes you know I would say that these webinars have been a huge success as has the last you know however many years that people have been using AIM devices has got to the point where people are now you know in a position where they have data as a key component of their sort of uh, racing um uh, sort of portfolio. It's it's or, or or toolbox. I should say portfolio is the wrong word. Toolbox is the right word to use. I've you know got anything from sort of a lap timer that tells me my predictive times, which as we've talked about many times holds way more data than I think most people who use them would know. All the way through to um, the beauty of what I just lived through yesterday and will be over the next few weeks is that wonderful scenario where you're able to set something up new and I had sort of new toys to play with, uh, which would give me a lot more data and a lot more information to be able to work with. And so, you know, think about it in many respects. There is a lot to do with, um, you know, how we think about data really should have a purpose. And I probably should have opened the conversation with just that sentence. And so the key is, is, is what do you want to know? Um, I often think about the conversation in many different sort of environments that, what the AIM systems are going to do is they are going to give you information and arguably they're going to give you knowledge. But unless you're in a position where you have a purpose as to what you want to be able to glean from that, what intelligence, what insight you want to draw from that information, it truly is just that. It's a whole load of data which will tell you information about certain key aspects of your car um, by nature of what it's done from, you know, how the engine is running to, to you know, how fast you went to what your G-forces were. And, and, you know, I think in many respects, some people are losing sort of sight of, of why they've got data in the first place. Now, I doubt many people who watch these webinars are those sort of folks who are there, but I think in many respects, um, it doesn't, um, it doesn't uh, you know, happen as often as it used to, but there are moments when you're at the track or you're with friends or whatever need be, and they get their device and they download the data and then they stare at the laptop screen and they think, where is that magic nugget that's gonna sort of jump out of the screen and tell me that's where I'm going to find half a second in terms of lap time improvement or uh, that information if I don't pay attention to it, um, is going to prevent me from being able to run the next session that we're going to work on. And so as we think about Race Studio 3 analysis and personalization and customization, the beauty of the new software is that you can really personalize it 
to what you want to know. And so I believe if we go to the next slide, Roger, that there are three major components. Now we, there are a thousand different combinations of how this data comes together. But I think there are three key areas that we should be able to focus on. And today we're gonna to look at one and two on here, which is depending on the device you have, some of these will be easier to do than others. But the lowest common denominator that exists for every single driver um, who is using any kind of AIM device from the entry level, AIM Solo 2, all the way through to any of the more advanced uh, devices that are there, are uh, that um, you want to first and foremost be able to focus on driver development. And this is being able to create a scenario. This is being able to create a view or a customization that allows you to be able to navigate that data to be able to find the intelligence and the insight that will help you find that area of opportunity. And we're going to look at that in the data. It could be consistency. It could be um, in um, sort of uh, areas of um, sort of uh, uh, a certain type of aspect of your driving. Am I, you know, finding that I'm not doing a good enough job in terms of um, line, for example, or it might be a case of um, I'm doing a, a poor job of braking or accelerating or mid corner, whatever the need be. Driver development is something that we all have the opportunity, regardless of what particular system we're using. But then as we move forward, we then get into the second part of the conversation, which I believe is vehicle health. Now, this is where, you know, we think about customizing the data that's being logged by a system that would allow us to be able to understand the health of our vehicle. Now, I oftentimes turn to this profile first for the very simple reason that if there's something wrong with the vehicle in between sessions, that is the number one thing that you need to work on Otherwise, it may prevent you from going out on track again. It doesn't matter about your drive development there. If your car's not working, it doesn't matter if you're going to be able to find another half second in a corner. But if your car's not actually moving, that's not as easy to do. So vehicle health for me is, is if you're lucky enough to have that system, the first thing I go to. Um, and so that's probably what we'll focus on, first of all, in looking at customization. And then the third component, and then they all start blending together because this gets very interesting, is chassis development, which is, is the car making the driver do something or is the driver making the car do something? And that's where you can start looking at the sort of the aspects such as, you know, from a point number one, you know, what is going on here in terms of the confidence from the driver? That might be associated with something that's happening with the dynamics of the chassis and the car. And so how do you find that combination together? And so in many respects, I think these are the three key areas uh, of personalization of the data. And if anyone's seen some of the sort of stuff that I've been talking about lately, um, if you've got those set up using um, uh, user profiles, in many respects, you're click, 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 done, you get the information you need, and then you move on to the next particular venture. And you overcome that challenge, which is, why am I downloading the data in the first place? And so that's what we're going to have a look at today. And that's what we're going to work on. So hopefully, um, I can uh, uh, share my screen now. Um, I did just download the yeah, very very latest gotcha. um, yeah, let me un, let three. me stop share mine you should uh, have the opportunity now which is lovely so let me just do that um and click here and click on share now this i go. promise this is race studio 3 and not race studio 3 beta you know it's funny ever since i've had um the beta on different computers um on my laptop i have the race studio 3 icon for the beta and on the uh, my main desktop I'm using here, I have the beta for the actual release. And so it's just one of those uh, nuances there. But this is actually the release that came uh, today. <coughs> Excuse me. All I've done is I've taken the data that I recorded uh, this past weekend. Um, uh, as Roger said, it's a new car. So we're going to see some, uh, uh, probably going to see some real inconsistency in terms of all sorts of stuff and i know that someone just mentioned it's time for the excuse handle you, know, <laughs> you, you are so well from you most, are so well known for that now james because you started it, it. Is. I, I should make a t-shirt i really should although it would be a size xxx xxl with the number of excuses i'd have to squeeze on it but uh in many respects uh i haven't looked at this data all i've done is i've loaded it on uh the, the computer now and and just by just clicking here and clicking on import in fact what was interesting is I didn't even need to do that because there was no data in my Race Studio 3. And so it said, import the file for the first time. So here is the data that we have. Now, if you remember from we're, that flow- We're only what, seeing your screen. We're not seeing you the actual Race Studio. We're seeing the blue figure for whatever reason. 
Are you seeing? Just just seeing your your desktop is all we're seeing. Oh, we're not seeing okay, Ray Studio Three. Can, uh, Might be on the second the... monitor or something. Oh, well, let's go back to Zoom I... and see what it's doing. Oh, I think yeah. Sh on. Share the program. There, there you go. Yeah. There. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on share screen and. Share. <laughs> there See, we go. There we go. Why is this person helping us with a webinar if they can't even figure out? <laughs> it's, it's never totally easy, James. It's a bit of confidence in, in my ability to be able to hopefully help. Yeah, uh, it's, never sort of <laughs> it's, ne it's, it's never easy. It's never easy. Okay, um, we're so, looking uh, good now. <laughs> what we've got here is that we do right now have Ray Studio 3. And I said, this is my little icon that's sort of uh, still popping up. But um, what I've done is I've imported these three files from the weekend. The times are, um, uh, anyone who knows uh, the track in these times, they're not setting the world on fire. I only found out halfway through the session, and this is why we did a shakedown that I was only getting, <laughs> sounds like the excuses have started. The <laughs> throttle was only going to 70%, um, which is we found out when I calibrated the uh, throttle position sensor, which uh, is, is genuinely true. Um, but uh, it's uh, it's really, all I've done is I've got the data. Now there's no video with these ones as well. I didn't want to add video too much. I know that's going to be a key component as we go through. So what I wanted to have a look at today was data. Now, if you remember from the uh, few minutes ago, I talked about the first thing that I want to be able to have a look at is vehicle health. I want to be able to see if there are key aspects of the vehicle that I want to be able to assess as soon as I've downloaded the data that need to be assessed going forward. So the first thing we're actually gonna build is a vehicle health profile. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna load up one of these sessions. And what you're gonna see is what many of us have probably experienced a few times when we've loaded Race Studio 3 analysis for the first time, which is effectively sort of like a default profile, which um, you know doesn't really tell us a huge amount of information that we want. Mine always seems to default to RPMs. Um, but this is this is not what I want. This is not going to help me. And, and just to give a quick navigation around Race Studio 3, for those of you who don't know, I've got all my channels that I'm logging here. Um, I've got my main page here, and I've got lots of different windows that I can work on. And it's the windows that I think are going to be interesting as we sort of evolve this conversation. So um, I want to assess vehicle health before I do driver development. So what I'm actually going to do is I am going to uh, turn off this time distance. And I'm going to load for uh, the purposes of um, uh, vehicle health, uh, the channels report. And so this is the um, way that we can, uh, it's interesting, this, this session has only got three, three laps. And so um, I, I might load a different one, but I'll show you how that works by you reusing the profile. But the channels report is gonna allow me to be able to see certain key variables coming from the engine that will help me understand how the uh, vehicle's performing, what the health is, that I can then use to be able to sort of convert that knowledge from the data into insights, or in fact, hopefully, nothing else at all. It, it means that once I've got this data and, and, and if it says nothing that, that alerts me that I need to do anything else, I'll switch this off and move to something else. So what I wanna do is I wanna be able to build this out. And so I wanna customize it for my own personal type of view. And so, uh, the first thing I want to do is start adding in some channels. Now, if we're talking about vehicle health, we want to be able to get some vehicle health type of channels. And so um, I like to do these in order because that will sometimes dictate how they show up as you go through the channels report. And I'm going to keep it relatively simple for the, for the purposes of demonstration. I also have a uh, Lambda on here, which uh, again, something new to work with, not use that. So I might actually ignore that one for today. Anyone who's knows how to read that, please uh, uh, help me, because um, uh, it's an area that I want to be able to learn a little bit more. But at the same time, I'm going to focus on a few things to start off with that are really important. So more than anything else, um, I want to be able to start with um, RPMs. Now, I can scroll up and down like I'm doing here, but if I were working with some of these data who has 10 times the number of channels, or they've got an ECU that's sending an absolute ton through, one of the nicest things you can do with Race Studio 3 analysis is you can use a search box, which makes life uh, easy. Well, you can't type it, it makes life a bit harder. <laughs> but if you type in the channel that you want to be able to look at, you can select it. So I'm going to start with RPMs. And what I'm really interested in here is I want to be able to see if I had any overrevs. And so that's really just a simple case of being able to add that in. And as soon as I hit OK, you can see that I start adding that in here. Now, many of us have used. Um, 
channels were brought before and I've just noticed something here, which probably, uh, as I said, haven't seen this data before, breaking in a new engine, never want to go above 6,800 RPM, it's something quite unusual there. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's unusual. Now, the other thing we didn't install on this one was an RPM filter, so that might be something to have a look at there too. But in many respects, um, you know, that's something that I need to pay attention to almost immediately. Now, once I've got the RPMs in, I'm just going to keep going and start building this out to be able to start giving me um, some uh, additional information that I need. So the next thing I want to be able to have a look at uh, from my point of view, I think will be water. Uh, I know it's water temperature, it may be called coolant, it may be called something else that's different there. But in this one, I want to be able to see something different. Now the strangest, not the strangest dynamic, but a different dynamic that I've never experienced before um, until I started driving Formula Ford in the UK where it was in Fahrenheit 34 yesterday morning, so pretty chilly, was um, not so interested in whether water's getting too hot, but interesting whether, whether, whether uh, water's too cold and whether I'm actually in a position where we started sticking sticky tape or, uh, you know, how duct, duct tape solves everything that you could ever have it solve. I, I think it's, it's the best thing in the world. And we started covering over a little bit the radiator inlets to be able to make sure that, you know, the, the cold, frigid air wasn't cooling the engine too much. And so what I want to be able to see on water temperatures, I want to be able to see max and I want to be able to see the average in that instance is typically what I want to be able to see. So I can see what they're running at. And as you can see, the uh, max and the average <laughs> too far away in terms of performance. And typically we run 70 to 80. And so this is running quite cold. So I've just got those there. Now, one of the things you may have noticed is I'm stopping along the way and I'm clicking on OK. Now I'm doing that because as I pick what I want, um, I can specify the flow which I like to see the data. So I like to see uh, RPMs, then I like to see water temperatures. You can probably imagine the next thing I'm going to want to be able to see is oil. So I can just tip it, type in oil, see how wonderful the search box is. But what I can also do here is um, I can see some other pieces of information. Here. Now you may be wondering, what's this one here? I can see oil pressure and oil temperature. That makes sense. Um, but oil pressure trigger is um, a status variable that I have set up, which uh, helps me understand if I've got a problem with oil pressure uh, in the vehicle. And so I want this one, first of all, it's an on off, which says that uh, uh, this uh, status variable, and if you're not sure what a status variable is, um, we can talk about that probably at another time. But basically, instead of just having an oil pressure trigger that says, you know, give me um, a log of every time the oil pressure drops below 3000 RPM. What I've got here, especially based upon the engine and the car that I have is that uh, I want to be able to see when the oil pressure drops below 30 PSI, um, but only when the revs are above 3000 RPM, because then I know I've got low oil pressure and high RPMs. If you're coming in off a session and your revs drop down sort of very low because you're just freewheeling in or just keeping the revs down, you may see that oil pressure trigger um, if you didn't have a status variable that said also assess it based on RPM. So I'm gonna add that one, uh, which didn't come on, which was good. Um, and then I'm gonna type in oil again. I'm gonna type in oil again, <laughs> which is there. And then I wanna see pressure. Um, so in this one, I wanna be able to see the average and I wanna be able to see minimum. Um, and I'm going to click there. And as you can see, I'm starting to build up a profile of engine health um, that, uh, let's do it one more time, just a little bit of temperature. Um, what I like about this, why James is filling in some of those, is, is, is you're building it uh, around what you like. And yeah. the other thing that I would like to do is, is and make sure everybody understands is when I'm doing these, at least, I, I'm building them like James is. And then I look at the data a little bit and I go, you know what? I, and I save the profile and then I work a little bit and I save the profile and that sometimes it's over the course of a couple of weekends or of, you know, of, of data analysis sessions before I get it tweaked. So I just continue to resave, 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 and you find you're, you're just building this thing that works well for you. I totally agree. And so that's one thing I haven't done yet, which um, if any of us remember the days <laughs> when did you ever do a piece of work and then forget to hit save and something happened and you lost all your work. This is a practice that I need to get into the habit of doing again when it comes to Ray Studio 3 analysis, because it's absolutely sort of a, a key component. So now I've set this up, and this is as far as I'm going right now with this particular view, is that I've got some key components that I wanted to be able to have a look at with this particular session. Now, um, 
there are a few things on here which, uh, uh, well, there's one thing on here that's major, which really bothers me, which is this right here. Now I know what happened there. Um, and uh, again, uh, I shall start jotting down in the excuse handbook. I missed second to third. Um, and it's a lift shift and uh, I didn't time it right. And so it was a free revving um, over rev, which I hated. And I hated the fact that it was a brand new engine, but at yeah. the same time, I know what happened. Those things there. happen. Those things happen occasionally. James, there's, some, there's maybe a function that you don't know about that's brand new that uh, I, heard, I heard your voice as you were setting some things up and you were talking about putting those in order. And then there's a question from Jeff here. It talks about reordering of the channels and, and that little red dot with the up and down arrow. If you click on that guy, right there you now can reorder the channels uh after making them just drag grab it and drag it down and and uh grab grab any of those and move them around take that ex that external voltage put it to the top and click on okay and you can reorder those which will make the building of that much easier now you can just go through and throw them up there and reorder them later which is absolutely fantastic and it i have is. to say um that is a huge plus because when you think about the customization in terms of the way things work that's a huge plus. So I don't even need to do that now. And it's, it, it's nice that yeah. this, uh, the software is now in a place where it's evolving faster than many of us are actually using yeah, you, it. You, you and um, me both. And the other one, yeah. the other one that I wanted to just mention real quickly is uh, the, yeah, James has given us a workflow and talking about setting things up and he's going to continue on. I see some questions that are popping up that I, that are great, but we're, uh, uh, like Kyle mentions channel, you know, channel report data channels. There's a, there, there are a, some other ones in there that are, you know, time at you know, whatever distance. And uh, we're going to, that's what we're going to cover in those one hours when we do a, a focus on nothing but channel reports. So today it's more uh, uh, James setting something up for us and showing us a workflow and, and personalizing it. We'll get into the details of uh, deeper details of, of all of the different functions in, in the weeks ahead. Yeah, I appreciate that, Roger, and I appreciate the questions that are coming up. Yeah. Um, the uh, I I have uh, this one, for example, this RPM. If I was setting this up and we had a, a little bit more time, or maybe it's one of the sessions that we do, I also have a variable that would have told me how far in distance, um, uh, in meters, and how far in time in terms of seconds the RPMs were above 7,000 RPM, so I could have seen if there were any potential critical damage that was happening in terms of how far it was or whether it was just a very sort of, we, we know that overrev sometimes uh, can happen in less than a tenth of a second and do terminal damage, but oftentimes it's interesting to be able to see if that's consistently happening. So that could be an interesting session for another time. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on this uh, gear icon here and I'm going to click save profile as, and I'm going to call this one um, RF07. You might be wondering what RF07 means. Um, it's the year that my Van Diemen was made, the one that I just ran this weekend. I also have an RF88 that was made in 1988, and so this one was made in 2007. And I'm going to, because I'm going to use these uh, profiles another time, and I'm going to say uh, vehicle health. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on OK. And from this point forward, this personalized uh, view is going to be available for me to be able to use uh, going forward. And so to give you an example, uh, if I turn that one off now and open up one with 11 sessions, it's there. But as we start going through and adding more and more profiles, we can flick through. So you can see here, as I look at this, there's more laps on this one. And I can start seeing if there's any information that uh, I want to be able to potentially address. And again, there's a little one here that, that's flagged, uh, a little bit of a, an over rev. And, and one of the things that I've generally tended to start working on as well as I start thinking through this, is how much of that is flux in the um, RPM signal that's come from the coil and how much of that is a genuine sort of uh, over rev. And so this is just something that helps me be able to work through those. Now, there's a lot more information on this page than we generally tend to use. And so um, uh, one of the things that I wanted to be able to do as well is that I personally love putting in some formatting uh, that exists based on things that I like. And so all of these bars across the top here will start giving us um, some interesting information about uh, uh, performance. And so, for example, if I click here, I can do some conditional formatting that will show me um, where I potentially need to focus my attention. Um, this is always, uh, we must have another decimal here that I can't see because this one's quite interesting that 12.6 is green as is, is there, but that's probably because the external voltage hasn't fluxed too much. Now, you may be wondering why I've got that in there. And just to give you some examples of, of 
why I've downloaded the data and why I've started with vehicle health. One of the areas that has really caught me out in the past is the voltage um, on a Formula 4. Now, in the cars that I run, you don't have an alternator. Um, the battery needs to be fully charged before you go out to be able to make sure it's got enough voltage to be able to power not only the aim system, but also potentially to create a spark. And so in many instances, being able to see um, scenarios where if the voltage is gradually declining or is declining at a faster rate, I've had instances where we've thought that we've had a bad battery. Turns out it was a bad battery charger, but it allowed us to be able to see it before we went out for the next session. And that's why I generally tend to do things like vehicle health more than anything else. And in this instance, um, we can also see that if we look at water temperature as well, it's interesting that uh, you know this is um, you know quite low as we're starting out. This would have triggered my uh, cold engine uh, warning that's coming up. And so again, before we went out again, we'd make sure that potentially covered over the radius. And so there's a lot of really interesting things that are here. So that was the uh, the view that was based upon um, uh, sort of a, a conditional formatting. You can also add a variable uh, that allows it to be seen graphically in sort of bars and graphs, which I like as well. Um, and so you can see here that that area where the rev was really high, that sticks out like a sore thumb for me to be able to see now. And I can say, oh, that was in that particular area and be able to look at it. All I need to do at this point is I click on save profile and that's going to be available for me the next time I go into being able to have a look at this. Now, one of the things I mentioned earlier, and this is where Race Studio 3 analysis completely differentiates itself from Race Studio 2 analysis from just its ease of use more than anything else, is that instead of messing around moving sort of windows based windows around the screen to be able to see more than, you know, just the channels report on the page, I can add in some more information here. Now, one of the ones that I like to be able to look at is I like to add a scatter graph to this particular view. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click anywhere in this space here and I'm going to click on an add a window. And I'm going to say, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. I'm going to say I'd like at the bottom. By se selecting that, I now have the option of being able to add another analysis of the data, which I'm going to use for engine a uh, vehicle health, but on this particular page. So I'm going to click choose here and I'm actually going to pick something called um, scatter. Now, this is an XY plot, for example. So I'm going to click scatter. And it's going to give me the opportunity of being able to create a scatter graph. Now, one of the things you may be noticing on this page right now is I don't have any uh, channels to be able to start selecting. So all I need to do is hit the space bar. In fact, no, I don't need to hit the space bar. Um, and my channels report should appear. And uh, uh, we'll address that later, as with the usual demo. That's actually not appearing. Um, and so we'll go back to uh, addressing that as we go through. Typically, um, uh, this is one of the areas that has been um, a, a, a bit of a sort of on-off type of function. And so I think yes, it's generally it, tends Usually to, there would be a little channel bar off to the yeah, left Yeah, there edge. should be a channel bar that pops up here if I hit the space yep. bar. But, but we'll cover that off in a minute because I can change that by going into uh, the uh, time distance. And I go back to, and it should now allow me to do this. Nope, still not working on that. So anyway. Might. I want to right click in there again and add one to the left and you'll get the and add a channel bar. Yep, add one that, the that's the uh, that's the part of getting a brand new uh, you know, br brand new software and opening it up for the very first time, right? Yeah, absolutely. There you so, go. So uh, now you can select it. So again, I could, it, it, that looks like that's probably me error. And if I hit the space bar now, uh, it, uh, it still there. Uh, OK, so anyway. Just uh, for the purposes of, uh, of, of demonstration, we're going to carry on and, and forget the fact that I can't use Ray Studio 3 analysis. Um, and so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to select uh, some information here. Now, one of the things that I want to be able to see is I want to be able to see, and this is something that's useful. I used to get this a lot when I drove BMWs, um, and we had to install baffles in the fuel tank because what would happen is under high G load, the oil would slosh around and it would move away from the pickup point of the um, of the uh, uh, of the oil, uh, would move away from the pickup point and it would prevent us from being, and our oil pressure would drop. And so we can see that by being able to put a scatter graph on here. So what I want to be able to do in this instance is I want to be able to use um, oil pressure. Uh, and then what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to uh, choose an x-axis. And in this instance, I want to be able to use a GPS and I want to be able to use lateral acceleration. So I click there. Um, 
make sure I've done that right. Now what I'm starting to see is I'm starting to see oil pressure uh, that is based upon the uh, lateral load. And so you can see in this instance that what I'm able to see is I'm able to see the oil pressure that I have here and I have the lateral acceleration. And so what I can do is I can start seeing a plot of the information that will tell me, um, and in this instance, I don't need to see RPM, so I could switch that off if I wanted to um, in that instances. And so what I can now see on this screen is I can now see a scatter plot. And if I click up here, I can pick a few maps just to be able to see that a little bit better on the screen. And so what I'm looking at now is I wanna be able to see what's happening in terms of the oil pressure based upon the lateral acceleration. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for in this instance, if I've got heavy G load on either side, do we find dots that are down here, which they're not, so this isn't happening with this car, which shows that the oil pressure range is in a nice way. One of the things I can also do is I can choose a color channel. And one of the things I like to do here is I actually like to pick RPMs because what this will do is this will help me uh, look at this data where you can see where the RPMs are low or whether they're high in terms of where they are on track. And so also I can see, you know, if there's an instance on here where we've got um, low oil pressure, high G load and high RPMs as well. And so here I can see there's nothing wrong. And so I've customized this particular view as well. So what I can do now is I click up here and I click on save profile. And very quickly, I have a view now that I can use for vehicle health where I can understand all sorts of information uh, about the car and I can make quick decisions. Now, in this instance, I'm fine with this. This is all I want for the purposes of demonstration today. So I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna go to the second particular variable that I wanted to be able to have a look at, which is I wanted to be able to talk about driver development. So let's think about this. We're moving vehicle health to one side. We're just um, putting that in terms of saying, okay, I've got to watch out for RPM traces here. A little bit worried about the engine temperature, so we might need to uh, potentially stick that, but that's coming up to 64, so I'm not so particularly worried about that. And everything else that's on here isn't giving me any warning signs that I need to do anything, um, but uh, focus now on driver development. And so that's the next thing we're going to have a look at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close down the channels report and I'm going to load up uh, the time distance layout. Now, this is one that all of us are very familiar with um, because it mimics the measures graph that we typically saw when we use Race Studio 2 analysis. And it's the primary page that we load when we go to Race Studio 3 analysis. Now, this is the view that it's showing me right now. It's still selected the top laps. But before I go anywhere, what I want to do first of all is create a second profile because this is the second thing I need to know is I've done all my vehicle health. Now I want to start focusing on driver development. So I'm changing the sort of the focus that I have. I've still got all that data housed in this huge data warehouse or repository of data. But now I want to be able to have a look at it in respect of how do I improve as a driver. So I'm going to click up here in the gear icon again, and I'm going to click Save Profile As. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on um, RF07 again, uh, Driver Analysis. Now I have two profiles, and if I click up here, you can see it will give me the option of now having a profile to switch between, but we're not gonna do that. And now what I can do is I can start customizing the view of what I wanna be able to see on this particular page. Now I'm gonna set this up for me, but this is where you can be very, um, this is where it becomes uh, unique to you and what you want to be able to focus on and what you'd like to be able to see. Now, the things that I don't use, are uh, this storyboard at the bottom. So unlike the previous um, examples of where I would have gone in and I would have said, right click and add, what I'm gonna do in this instance, because I don't use this, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click on remove with it. So that gives me a much bigger real estate for me personally to be able to go in and start looking at uh, the data that's on the screen. This is, this is how I like to be able to look at the data. The next thing I wanna be able to do is to then say, well, um, how do I analyze data? And so not going into necessarily too much detail because I've talked about this on webinars before, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy to come back and talk about it again. I have a flow that was actually taught to me by Roger as to how I think about data. And my flow is very simple. At the bottom, we have time compare, which shows me what's happening in terms of one lap versus the other, which is actually showing up here a lot, but we'll clean that up in a minute. The second thing I like to see is the speed trace which tells me um, why it's happening in terms of where you're faster or slower, that point in the track. 
and then why it's happening in terms of what the driver's doing in terms of their inputs. And so I wanna configure that view so I can set that up for me going forward because that's the next view that I wanna be able to see. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna click here and I'm gonna select the best lap because it cleans up the screen to start off with and makes it easier to be able to see. Then I'm gonna start adding in the channels I wanna see. So I've already got RPMs and I quite like to see RPMs that are there. So I wanna be able to see speed. So I can click on speed and using that search function, um, I've actually got um, a few channels that show up. And with my new vehicle, I have wheel speed and GPS speed. It's a new thing for me. I've never had wheel speed sensors, but uh, over time, that's gonna be a useful thing for me to be able to learn things like wheel spin or more likely in a Formula Ford with 115 odd horsepower, more likely I'll be able to see where the wheels lock up because <laughs> unless it's raining and you're on ice, wheel spin might be a, 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 a thing of dreams. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it simple and I'm actually gonna pick on GPS speed to start off with. Um, one of the things you may have noticed is because this is a brand new installation, um, I've got uh, things in kilometers per hour. And uh, unbeknownst to many people in the UK, we use miles an hour, not kilometers per hour, but then we use metric for other things because we just like things complicated. And so uh, I'm actually gonna make sure I can change this here and I'm gonna change the unit of measurement to miles per hour. Um, I'm actually gonna stop and show you what I just did there, just to sort of slow down a little bit and change that so you can see what I'm doing again. Um, anywhere where you see a gear icon, and this is where curiosity should take over. If anyone's watching this, um, you're probably all curious um, software users like I am. And you often look for little sort of tells as to, ooh, what does that do? I'm the person that if there's a red button, I'm likely to push it just to see what happens. <laughs> and so in many instances, if you see a gear icon, there's something more. It's like um, a, a, a sort of a, a mystery box that will take you to something new that you don't know about. And slowly over time, it'll help you develop your appreciation uh, of all the wonderful functionality that exists in Race Studio 3 analysis. And so if I click on this gear icon, it's gonna bring up the channel settings um, for that particular channel that I'm looking at. And one of the things you probably saw here is that I mentioned that it was in um, uh, uh, kilometers per hour. And I, I don't use kilometers per hour. I don't fully understand how they work. Um, and so, uh, do really, but uh, um, I'm gonna change that to miles an hour and I can change many variables that are in here. And I have two options now. Um, I can either click apply and exit or I can click apply. Now you may be wondering, well, hold on, apply or apply and exit, what does that mean? And again, this is a discipline we may have learned uh, from Race Studio 2 analysis, but I can, I can apply it to that channel. And I can also go in and change a few other things that are in here as well, like brake pressure, for example, maybe in bar. And again, um, I don't use that, I use PSI. And so I can change that one and apply it. I can do it on the rear and apply it. And then I can click apply and exit. And that would have changed all of the information that's available for me to be able to use. So when I now click on this one, it now shows me miles per hour and GPS. These two are overlaid against each other right now. Don't worry about that. It's gonna start looking a bit messy, but we're gonna customize that so it looks nice. And so we've got RPM speed. What else did I want? So I'm gonna go back to the channels list and I'm gonna keep adding these. I'll move quite quickly for the purposes of demonstration. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add in here, um, uh, I want to be able to see uh, uh, throttle. Throttle. I want to be able to see um, brake. And I'll stick with just these ones for now for the purposes of demonstration and time. So these are all the channels I want to be able to see to be able to draw some conclusions from this data. Uh, but I don't know about you, but I can't really see much on this screen right now. <laughs> so now we get into that experience that we've had previously working with Race Studio 2 analysis. And there are so many areas of consistency um, between the two, that all we need to do is to remember these buttons that are up here. And right now we have the plot type is overlapped or they're on top of each other. I don't need to tell you what overlaps mean, sorry about that. Um, uh, what I can do is I can click on some of these and I can move them around. Now, if I click on this one that says mixed, a little number appears here and I can choose the order that I want them in. And I'll show you that in just a second. <coughs> Excuse me. Or I can go in here and I can click on um, tiled and this will stack each of these on top of each other so you can actually see them in order. So now I'm starting to see these channels in a particular order. Now, I did see in the comments at the beginning uh, of the webinar, someone said, how do I make it so that GPS speed always appears at the top? And in Race Studio 2 analysis, 
there was a sort list. So in Ray Studio 3 analysis, there's a sort list. And so one of the things that you can do is you can sort here and you can change the custom sort. Now, this is a newer feature that came out in the, in the latter sort of updates to the beta. Previously, it was this sort of section here that I can now go in and I can do a custom sort. And so here I can put them into a particular order. So I want to be able to see GPS. Um, I only got a few channels here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click out of that one because that's not exactly what I want to be able to see for the demo today. But what I'm going to do, just you, are, you already had the you already had it filtered out to just break. So you were just seeing break. So if you clear the word breakout, right, right there you go. Now this is you... what I do it with Roger because Roger teaches me more than I can ever. <laughs> well, I was Roger sitting there looking at it myself, going, "What in the world? I don't understand that." So a now, second now set of eyes is so helpful. Thank you, Roger. So now that's gone back to how it should be. Now I've filtered out of here. I can click in the custom list. And I can do a custom sort. Choose, uh, choose the channel go. order. And this is where I'm now in a position where I can change the order. Now, one of the things that I generally like to do is I like to grab it with the mouse and you can move this all the way up to the top. So I like GPS speed at the top, always have done. That goes there. The next thing I like to see is RPMs. And so I can either scroll down and pick them up like this, or I can use the search function and put it in. So that's the next list that I like. Or I can go in here and say after that, the thing I like to be able to see is brake. So I can see the brake pressure. I just want the front one because that's all we've selected. And I can move that up. Now, the interesting thing is if I have that typed in the search box, I can't see the full list. So ideally, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to sort this by moving it up to the top of the list uh, and place it in the place where I want to. And so a lot of things that we're able to do here, um, it's just Make sure we get that sorted as we want it. So we'll put that at the top. And we're going to do RPMs here. Then we're going to do uh, brake pressure front. And the last thing I want to be able to do is throttle. So let's put the throttle this here as well and move that up. This is just the order that I like. Um, and uh, if I click on OK now, you can see that it's sorted the channels into the order I need. Now, a trick that we learned in Race Studio 2 analysis that exists in Race Studio 3 analysis is if your scale is all a little bit mixed up, double click on it, and you can move them into the order that you want to be able to see how that data is lined up. And so that's the view that I want. And so now all I need to do is click on a lap so I can select another one. Uh, for example, I can pick, uh, let's pick this lap here. And now I can start doing the analysis that we're all so comfortable with in relation to the performance on track and how we're doing um, in terms of the analysis of the driver. Now, I said earlier on that I wanted to be able to set that up as driver analysis. So I'm going to click on save. But for driver analysis, I want a little bit more than just one page. I want to be able to see some more information on screen as well beyond just this. I want to be able to see a few other key variables. Um, and I like two more. Now, the first one I like is the track map. And so I click here and I add the track map. And what this will do is it will give me the uh, track map that I can use to be able to see um, how I'm doing. Now, one of the things you may have noticed is that it started to select certain sectors. And that's based upon the track map that has been default set up. Now, that's an interesting thing. For anyone watching this who's transitioning from Race Studio 2 analysis to Race Studio 3 analysis, one of the things that you may used to have had to have done is you would have had to go on in and build a new map it would have automatically created right turns, left turns, and straights, and you would have had to have saved that map name. With Race Studio 3 analysis, I haven't done any of that yet, but it's automatically done it for me. So you can see in here that um, you can see that if I look at the track map, there are all these sectors that have been created. I can see um, the right-hand turns, which are in blue, the straights that are in green, uh, sorry, in green, that's right, and the left-hand turns that are in red. And you can see that it's automatically pre-populated that for me. So it allows me to be able to load the third of the driver analysis that I want for my view, which is I want to be able to see um, the split times report because I love and always love the split times report, which allows me to be able to see how I've been doing on track. And so this is the solution that will give me my best theoretical lap. But because it's automatically created the segments, it's allowed me to start building this one from scratch. And so those are the three primary sort of pages that I want to be able to see um, based upon a driver profile. So what I'm going to click up here is I'm going to click on save profile. And now with the data that I have in each of the files, I can do those two things. I've downloaded my data. I come in. I want to be able to see uh, vehicle health. 
there it is. I can see the information about the car, what's happening, see the information I need. Similarly, if I want to be able to load up um, the driver analysis, there it is. That's the second thing I'd look at. And so the purposes um, for analyzing data, I've got the data in a user profile customized to how I want it. But I want to go a bit further than that. I want to clean it up a little bit more because I want to be able to really take advantage of some of the Race Studio 3 analysis functionality, which I personally love. And I can show you in, in a, just a couple of minutes here as we go through. So one of the things that people have asked me about many times is um, what if I want to be able to create custom segments um, and the track map for, you know, for, for, for me that may be different to how um, uh, Race Studio 3 analysis has created it. Well, what we're going to do is we're actually going to do a little bit of that today. And we're going to actually create some named corners um, at, uh, at Silverstone National. So right now it's straight, right, straight, right, straight, left, right, straight. Um, which sort of uh, sort of works with um, the track map that is there. But I know of these corners slightly differently. So what I can actually do is if you notice, if you hover over the top of the mouse, you can actually sort of start to play around with these things. Remember that curiosity, if the mouse pointer changes to something else, again, big red button moment again, I'm like, ooh, what does that do? If you right click on this, it allows you to start creating the track map layout that works for you. And you've got a lot of options. You can merge with the next slip, uh, split. You can divide it by placing the cursor where you want it in terms of the split. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this resource national. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to merge with the next split. And that's going to be Cops Corner that is there. You can see that I'm coming in for the corner. It's going to allow to see the braking and the accelerating out. And that's going to be the first. Then I've got uh, Club Straight, I think this is called. So I can click and drag this. Now, what you probably noticed is that uh, I didn't right click on that one. I actually dragged and dropped. And so if you hold the corner of a segment, you can just say, OK, well, I want it there. Now, you may be wondering why I put that split there. And the trick, again, something that Roger taught me, um, is that you never really want your split halfway through a corner because it can skew the data based upon certain variables that are happening. You want it at a point where you're um, you know, driving in a straight line. It just makes the analysis of the splits easier. So I just moved that just before I broke for this particular corner here. This is maggots and beckets. Um, many of you may have heard of that. So um, I'm going to move that there. Then I've got Wellington straight here. So I'm just going to move that there. I'm fine with that being a straight. And uh, yep, I'm going to leave those two uh, in that instance there. Where's uh, just a straight line there in terms of acceleration and stuff. All right. So that's how I want to be able to see the data. Now, this is the bit that I truly love is that when I lived in America, every track had corners based upon numbers. And then moving back to Europe, this is actually, if I wanted to have a conversation with someone about analysis, not corner one, they'd be like, what are you talking about corner one? They'd ask me if it's called COPS. <laughs> and so that's called COPS corner. And so we change it to call it COPS corner. If this one is the club straight, I can rename this and I can just call it club. Similarly, I can change this one uh, to maggots. And then I can change this one to. Oops. Well, James is continuing to do that. What? What? It's it's personalizing your view, right? It's it's what exactly. everybody knows it as. It's what when you're sharing data with somebody, re, being able to set these splits where you like them, and then give them the names that 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 the normally used names and and at the local track, is very very helpful. And then James is going to do all of this, and then he's going to save these these splits. Uh, in a little file, and he would be able to share those with uh, with all of his mates, and and uh, being able to, to everybody could start to use these exact same splits. Absolutely right. And so, um, name them all the corners that we wanted to be able to name them that are there. Now, if I go back to the split times report, notice that uh, all of these are now representing the particular sectors that we're in, and I can add information at anywhere on these particular points that works for me. And so remember that conditional formatting? This is going to help me figure out consistency. You can see that the areas that are most inconsistent are going down the straightaway, which would suggest consistency through cops, yes. and also in the right-hand side here at Luffield. And you can see that because these lines are far apart. And it just helps you identify certain aspects of the driving. And so it's a nice way of being able to customize your view. All I need to do is click Save. Now, one of the things that's interesting here is if I never changed 
um, these again, every time I would load Silverstone National, it would actually save this track map layout. But what I want to do is I actually want to be able to save this and use it elsewhere. So I'm going to click on uh, this uh, area here, click on choose track map. And um, this is the one that I've just created that is here. So I'm going to click on the gear icon and I can say um, I can export it, send it to other people. I can clone it to be able to then save it. Um, I can say new splits division. And here I can go in and say, this is uh, Silverstone. I just call it Silverstone James for the purposes of demonstration. And then that's an option that's available to me. So then I'll have my section and then I'll have the, um, the splits. Now, one of the things that I would actually recommend you do is that instead of doing what I just did, um, I'll click on save and it'll ask me, do I want to update for all the sessions on the same day? Now, the answer to this is yes. But you're highlighted on the old split. So make sure you cancel out of that highlight Silverstone James. Uh, cancel right there. There you go. Okay. And then you need to open it again if you wanted to. Exactly. But the, and, go ahead. And I'm just conscious of time, Roger. And time yeah, I, I, know, I know. I know it's hard. But, um, <laughs> yeah, but all of these give you the option. And so uh, what I was going to say is, is since we sat down together, we started looking at the data and we said, okay, we went from having just a whole mass of data that was there to being in a position that if I download this data file now and go in, all I can do is I can look at my vehicle health, I can scold myself for having an over rev, I can make sure my temps are fine, nothing else on here alarms me, no oil pressure trigger. So then I would move to driver analysis and I'd spend some time looking at this and I'd be able to look at consistency based upon this particular performance. I'd be able to have a look at line on the track map. I'd be able to have a look at time distance and pick some laps here, which by the way, this function here is so helpful for being able to pick laps. If you click on it, it'll say select the best lap, three laps or five laps. So if I pick best three laps, I can look at the consistency of the three laps I was on. And now I can start seeing that um, based on the lap time that I set, which was the reference, which if we click here and say, make this the reference lap, which it is, I can now start to see that it was cops and coming out of cops where I was inconsistent. And I can see what was I doing in terms of driver inputs. One was braking too soon. Um, one was uh, potentially sort of uh, braking too late and not being able to carry the speed in and out. And I can analyze the data as I need to. And so in the space of a few seconds, I can click through all of the different sort of uh, user profiles that are custom to my view that allow me to be able to analyze this data. And now I'm going to leave you with one final thing before I hand it back to Roger based on the hour that we have, is that many of us may be using more than one machine with our data. I did notice in the comments at the beginning, somebody said, how do I manage my data for a laptop that's on the road? And I may want to analyze it later on. Based upon your configurations and what you've set up, there's one last thing, which is a very nice feature is that if I go back to this all button here, I'm back at the original page uh, that we started out with the sessions. If I click on this gear icon here, I can see the profiles that I've created. Now you'll notice that if I hover over those uh, icons, uh, there's an extra menu that allows me to export it, which I'm sure is gonna be talked about in the future coming webinars. But there's also this lovely setting, which is called share. And if I just click that there, doesn't seem like I've done much. But if I log in to another instance of Race Studio 3, the, the production, and I click on Race Studio Analysis, if I've used the same login, that profile is going to be available for me on any machine that I've logged into with my username and password, which means that if I have my race laptop on there, and I've spent some time like I have with all of you today building the custom profiles, I don't need to recreate them. I don't even need to upload and uh, export and import. I can just do it from that point of view as well. So in relation to a sort of uh, customizing your experience, this helps really well. So that's all I was gonna to say today. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, we can answer some questions or, or, or comments. Yeah, leave that up there for just a sec. What I would, I'll, I'll add, and I know we are up against the clock, but James just went through probably 40 minutes of, of setting up from nothing, from a brand new install, and brand new downloaded data. And he was able to get to a point where he has two of his three things that he probably would have set up, right? Uh, you know, driver improvement, vehicle health. And he, and he saved the, the, uh, the profiles 
and he and he's ready to go. You you would the next weekend he would get some data. He may tweak them a little bit, but it'll take even less time. And that forty minutes was explaining them all. So in the at the end of the day, you all of us that are using the data, you know that probably is a, is a fifteen or a twenty minute operation. Just kind of get things set up the way you want it, save it. The 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 question that I get a lot, and the question that I have in my mind is how will this how will this end up? Personalizing is is certainly it's available either way, but I happen to be one that my user profile so far is I've got a user profile and I've got a bunch of tabs, and I have my different things are in the different tabs, right? So I basically have got one user profile for that car, that uh, you know that vehicle maybe, and I've got my vehicle health in there. I've got my you know maybe seven tabs that are open. Or do you do it the other way that J uh, J James was kind of setting it up where you have a profile for a car and then right underneath that, the vehicle health on that one, a whole other profile for the driver performance and another one for the vehicle performance, something like that. It's going to be interesting to see how people uh, end up doing that, right? There's uh, the, uh, two different thoughts. And then um, uh, somebody mentioned in the, I think Kyle talked about it, uh, different, different cars and different things. James was heading directly directly that way by the RF007, I think, or RF07. He is setting up profiles that are built around that car, and he's starting his profile names with the car itself and then what it does. So if he runs the other car, and it, maybe it has less sensors, more sensors, different sensor names, whatever it happens to be, uh, he'll have another profile that has uh, for the for the 88 car. So uh, the, the, I, there is so, they're, they're so small in size that uh, having a few of them around doesn't uh, doesn't hurt anything. So I think that's uh, that's pretty helpful. Anything you'd like to add there, uh, James, or did you see any questions there that you wanted to kind of cover on as we're heading on our way out? Um, not 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 really. I mean, I know that we've got some questions that we could. Uh, so I think we've covered most of them in terms of, of what we're looking at. All I'll say is, is feel free to answer the questions. One of the things you also notice is that you know, it's sort of a, it's always with a live demo that, that some of the things aren't exactly as you need them. And I think that Race Studio 3 is being evolved and updated on a regular basis. So the one thing I would recommend to everyone is be curious with the software, yeah. uh, press a lot of buttons, use the gear icon everywhere you can. I think I've customized this probably at only about 20% of what a hundred percent customization would look at in terms of estimation. And I think that the beauty of what Roger just described is absolutely spot on, which is, by being able to you know, set this up for how I want it, this makes my time at the track. And, and, and I would, this is the sort of the thought that I'll leave everyone with. The one thing we don't have at the track is time. We think we do, but we don't. Because when we finished our session, we go to a driver's meeting or we've got repairs to do, or we've got uh, uh, people to make excuses with, or um, any of those particular sort of scenarios. And that whole process that I hear constantly from people is, do you know what? I just don't have time for data analysis. Yeah. But a bit of pre-prep and building these segments and these profiles ahead of time before you get to the track and then sharing them like I did means that in the click of two or three clicks, you get what you need and you move on to whatever's next. And I think that we all, I, I take pleasure in looking at data sometimes. It's a fun thing to do to find those insights and clues. But that's when you've got more time on your hands. If you're in a, in a rush, and I particularly think about this with vehicle health, if you're, luxury, if you're in the luxurious position to have it, you could save yourself um, the, or you could, you could avoid missing a session because you spent that you know, 30 minutes at home setting up the profile with the data that will give you the two to three minutes when you're at the track, which will make sure that something is repaired or something works uh, and that you make the most of your time. So that's all I'll say is that these profiles, this customization can be done in advance to save you hours of time at the track. There you go. Um, if, if you'd like to unshare your screen, yes, I will share mine. And boom, there we are, I think, yes. Uh, one last question, I've seen several questions this way. Uh, Sherm Johnson was was one of them. The um, uh, was asking a question, okay, how do we handle Race Studio 2 to 3? Keep in mind that what we were uh, kind of focusing on today was personalizing Race Studio 3. Your, your question was obviously part of that. But we are going to do um, a series of webinars coming up in the next uh, seven or eight weeks where we get into the details. And, and two of them, two of the 
upcoming webinars, probably in the next three weeks, we'll be transitioning from Ray Studio 3 beta, for those of you that have downloaded that, to Ray Studio 3 production. They're loaded into totally separate uh, folder structures and databases and everything. Important to keep our beta and our productions you know, separate. Now that you're going to try to transition over and start using the, pro the production version, let's give you some tips and tricks on how to do that, how to get your data over, maybe clean some things up while we're doing it, how to get all your profiles and your math channels and, and everything else over. There will be an entire webinar on that, and there will be an entire webinar on what your question was, Sherm, which was, I've been using Ray Studio 2. I'm, I'm heading to Ray Studio 3 analysis now. How do I make that transition? How do I get my data across? How do I do these things that uh, and start the process as efficiently as possible? Uh, there'll be an entire uh, hour long video on, on that as well. So uh, lots and lots of specifics coming in the in the next weeks. Everybody keep watching. And uh, but this one was great about personalizing and making it where it was uh, was something that worked for James. And I and I think it showed the power of Ray Studio 3 and, and, the, and the, the ability to personalize it, would, it very, very well. This video, just like all the rest of them, will be up on our YouTube site uh, here within the next hour or two, as fast as I can do it. Uh, as I mentioned uh, uh, before we actually started to record, uh, this is our 197th video, and we've done about 152 hours worth of uh, materials from this webinar series that are all up there. All the new 2020 through 2022 live webinar videos are all up there that you can search and, and find the information that you're after. We've tried to name them and, and in the description put enough in there, so if you use the YouTube search button, you're going to find the uh, the information that you're find the right video hopefully that you're after so go check check it that out um we're we're out here to help give us a holler uh there's a phone number there the 800 number to give us a call drop us an email if you're having some more questions about this or your hardware let let us know we're here to help make sure that you're getting the 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 most value out of your data, data system and your data software the uh what are we doing next well, we've, uh, I've kind of already hinted at it a little bit, but the, the, the very next webinar, one week from today, is Race Studio 3 Analysis Beta to Production. Uh, just as it states there, Matt Romanowski is going to come join us. Matt's been a big help for us uh, in just using this software in his production motorsports. Uh, at the track, he's been using the beta software for a long time and has continues to use it and has transitioned over to the production. So we're going to talk about how do we get all this information that's in that's in our beta program for those of you that had set that up and have been using it. And it's been thousands of you, by the way. And then how do we move that or not move it, but bring the settings over and bring the data over files that you want. How do we get that into the into production so we can you you can continue to use the production version now that it's available? Matt's going to talk about that and 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 uh, and lots of other uh, lots of other things as well. I am sure next uh, next Tuesday, March eighth. So looking forward to that. Uh, that is just the the first one in a in a bunch of things that we have planned coming up on uh, more detailed and specific use of how to make this work for you. Contact information. Uh, James is always kind enough to answer questions with folks. Uh, I know he gets a lot of emails and he forwards some to me. I forward some to him and we uh, and, and we tackle these things together. So uh, there's a, James has a, a website, jamescoburn.com. I think in the video, I'm sorry, in the chat box, we've put up uh, uh, links to some of his YouTube videos that he's done on Race Studio 3 analysis. If not, they'll be in the description box below. And there's uh, there's James's email address as well. And on the left side is my email address. If you have anything that you're at, any questions or any topic uh, ideas for, for future webinars, make sure you let me know and we will, uh, we will go, for, go from there. James, I appreciate you coming and doing this again. I know you're a super busy guy and you, and you got another webinar tomorrow that you need to prepare for, but uh, you took time to come with us and talk about personalizing uh, Ray Studio 3 to, to the ways that works for you. Thank you very much. Is there anything else you'd like to kind of add on your way out? Uh, no, I I uh, I want to say thanks to everyone for watching. I've seen some very kind comments in the suggestions box. I think I'll just reiterate. Just I think whether you're watching on YouTube or watching live, whatever need be, just click around, play around, find what works for you. Because and and do it when you are at home. Don't do it at the yeah. track uh, if you can avoid that. If you yeah, if your driver's meeting at eight a.m. and your first session is not till four p.m., maybe do it at the track. But generally speaking, do this at home. Um, uh, because it'll it'll mean that you really really get to appreciate the the software so much more. And so I uh, just want to say thanks for having me, and, and I love doing these. Uh, a bit uh, rough in a couple of spots today because I think we were doing it live, but uh, generally speaking, uh, very enjoyable. And thanks to all of you. 
Thank you again, James. And the uh, the one last thing I would add is is it is still it's production, but it's uh it's it's two versions into production, right? So you may, as you're clicking around, as James mentions, may may still find some issues. Boy, please uh, uh, don't worry about overwhelming us. But the software at aimsportline.com. Uh, it's it's on, uh, on some of the different websites we've talked about it a lot. If you've been as part of the beta, you you know that email address. If you find anything or or see some things you'd like to either have uh, you know functionality added or bug fixes, uh, make sure you email me. That's fine, but also include software at aimsportline.com, and that uh, we're getting it right. Get that gets it right to the software team, and they're able to then uh, prioritize and and, and get uh, these bug fixes as fast as we can. Thanks, everybody, for coming. I appreciate it. It's been a great time today, as usual. Uh, look forward to, to, to James joining, joining us again in the next few weeks as we, because uh, he's been a, a heavy user of this, and we'll probably try to ch talk him into talking about a certain function in here as we, as we go forward as well. So thanks, James. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for coming, and we will see you uh, next Tuesday.